So thanks everybody for joining me today. Probably gonna have a little bit of a smaller group because people are out of town and stuff. I got a lot of emails saying that. Um, thanks for the third, this is my third time doing this here. How this works is I'm gonna show some artists um, and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to post these artists' works, their websites on this website, my Brian Likes Art. If you go in there and you scroll down, you'll be able to see this presentation that we're doing today, as well as links to the artists. So if you have more desire to check them out, you can do that. And what I like to do is kind of go through them, not fast, but just go through it. I don't do a lot about the artist process, about their background. I hope that this will entice you enough to go on there, kind of check out the links and see um, if you want to have, get more information about the artists and their works. Um, so that is that. Is there any questions? Now yet, also my lovely a friend assistant, Charlene, if you have questions, if you could just kind of wave your hand, she'll zip over and give you a microphone so everybody can hear the question. And I also am recording this for the um, HHTV that'll be shown for all the rest of the residents next week. So, without further ado. Are you on YouTube as well? I am on YouTube, yes. This will also be on my YouTube channel. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's a great question. This will be on the Senior Wellness Club channel. Okay, so I'm going to start with an artist named Sean Yoro. And um, this artist is a bit more kind of involved. He is more of a activist artist and his work itself, I find it's kind of cool, but I think his actual um, making of the work, come on in, Linda. Hi. Hello, come on in. Thank you. Yeah, he's pretty interesting. So he um, comes from Hawaii. He, he was born in Hawaii and he now lives in Los Angeles. So what he does is he paints these figures um, on a paddle board. So he balances on a paddleboard and he paints these images. He balances on a paddleboard. He balances on a paddleboard. He sits on a paddleboard. Does everybody know what a paddleboard is? Yeah. Okay, so he, he balances on a paddleboard. Linda, there's seats here if you want. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> a paddleboard isn't in water, is it? It is in water. So yeah, this is water. And this is this is a large, very large, well, like I would say it's probably about 10 feet long. Um, and he, his, a lot of his work is about um, global warming and, and uh, what's happening with the coral reefs, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, so this is another one he did. So I'll just read you a little bit about him. So artist Sean Yoro, also known as Hula, seems to be more comfortable on his paddleboard than on ground, placing murals in hard to reach places like underpasses and the side of a sinking ship. It is these seaside backdrops that he creates as hyper-realistic portraits, images of women that peek above the water when the tide is just right. So what do you think of that? Uh, interesting, very interesting. It's nice, right? I'm a fan of that. Right, yeah. I think that's beautiful. I love the way he um, utilized the reflection as well yes. with the figure looking down. I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. And this is another one. It's an uh, overpass, as you can see there. Oh, oh my. Yeah. So, Brian. Yes. Where does the painting end and the water start? That's a great question. I'm going to guess these particular ones our end right at the water's edge. And that said, his materials that he uses, he makes sure that they're very earth friendly, environmentally friendly. Um, and I will show you later that he does work with the water as well. So yeah, I believe these are, because he is on a paddleboard. And you, if anybody's been on one, if you do any sort of leaning, you will just tip right over. <laughs> so you wouldn't want to do that. So is that painted on the, on, the, on the wall? Yeah, that is painted on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I thought that was really beautiful. The dimensions of it. Yeah, the dimensions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost three three D. The face is so luminous. Very. Yeah. Right. And very. Um, yes. This was scary. 
It's kind of, what's scary about it? Oh, well, she looks like she's dead. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, to me, I thought she was just dipping her head in the water. But yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's a possibility. It's very open to interpretation, definitely. Oh, I sure hope I look like that when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I still have rosy cheeks and <laughs> shining skin. <laughs> well, if you're wet, I guess you would be shining skin. No, that's really something. And so here he is, mm -hmm. wow. sitting on his paddle board. Wow. Yeah, that's how he works. Yeah. yeah. Pretty impressive. He and he just rolled over. Right. Yeah. Do you know where he does his work? Do you know where these were done? I don't know specifically. Um, I He travels around the world actually doing works. And I'll show you some other works that he's done in different places that were pretty amazing. Um, and again, they're all, what I like is that it's art with a purpose. There's a, there's a message behind it about activism. Um, I would be curious to know why he cho chooses just to paint women. Um, I think there's other opportunities, but you know, we all have our language or, you know, what we are drawn to our aesthetic. So, yeah, but I do love the way he uses the water in that. So he also does in Antarctica, in Arctic. So this is painted on an iceberg. <laughs> yeah. Why do you do that? That is a great question. Um, I'm not sure he, he does a lot of testing really. with his element, with his, um, with his paints or whatever it uses. But yeah, that's pretty, and this is about global warming. And I, I'll give you an idea of the scale of this one here. So there he is standing. Oh my! And he is on a paddleboard even in that. He is. He's on a paddleboard in that freezing water. Yeah, right. Oh. Yeah. Doesn't that look surreal? Yeah. Oh. So a pre, a, I I would guess that as the ice melts, the painting will disperse. disperse. Right. Yeah. It'll just kind of dissolve into the water. Okay. Yeah. And I guess you know that's poignant. That's where what flooding is doing to us. Just everything is dissolving and going away into the water. Yeah. And there he is doing it. So there he is sitting on his paddleboard. Very comfortable. <laughs> yeah. What do we think of this? Well, I don't get what the message would be. What the message would be? Yeah, I mean... You said that he was an activist, uh -huh. and I don't know if I were there and he wasn't there and I saw that woman's face against the iceberg, mm -hmm. what would it communicate to me other than what it is? What if it was melting and the woman's faces started breaking down with that well, interesting? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, I don't I, know, yeah. you know, if it would be melting or how it would look. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, that's a good question. It's it, it it's kind of it sort of looks out of context. It's a cool it's a cool aesthetic, but it is you know yeah right. Do we ever see the before and after? I mean, is there a likelihood that we have another photo of that? Oh, the iceberg itself. Oh, oh yeah, you know that's a great question. I would check his website again. I'll have the website on my Brian likes art, so you might want to check on that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know when actually he did this, um, but that's a great question. Wow. Yeah, he seems like a really cool guy. You could probably just reach out to him. Oh my! Yeah, I thought this one was amazing. I, I would I should have done more research on the symbolism he has on the lines of the body. He, I know he grew up in Hawaii, so I'm not sure if those are. Yeah, he has all those, um, and maybe somebody has any ideas of what those lines could be. But I think can you imagine this melting? I think that'd be pretty amazing to watch that and how he did it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought it was really. So that ice is real, and the ice is, is there. Yeah, that's, he, he went. On his arm. Yeah. Yeah. His arm. yeah, he goes into these different places and, and paints on these different surfaces. Wow. Yeah. It's an amazing concept. I know. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. 
idea. Yeah. Uh, now that would be pretty intense to watch that break up, I think. Yeah. And melt. Yeah. And you can see what's cool. You can tell his paints on his paddleboard there. Yeah, right. And he's not even wearing a wetsuit or anything. He's just. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really nice. Uh -huh. Oh, I see what you can hear there. This one's interesting because it has um, even more elaborate uh, paintings on the face, line paintings on yeah. the face. Yeah, mm -hmm. here, right. I don't know if that's like a um, indigenous or tribal or something. And then across the eye also. Oh, right here, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. Even I think maybe through here too. Yeah, and when I first looked at that, it looked sad. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It reminds me of Andy Goldsworthy. Andy Goldsworthy. Yeah, because a lot of things he did were done in nature and they were transitory. Right. He had to catch them before they disappeared. Mm hmm That's great. Yeah, Andy Goldsworthy. Yeah, definitely. That's a good connection. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you this short video where he, this is him painting next to a um, drop-off waterfall. <laughs> it's about two minutes long. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does, oh, right there, yeah. Good call, Alan. Yeah, he's holding onto a rope while he very casually standing on the paddleboard. Yeah, look at that. Even got a lot of fall down there. As much as I fear dying, mm -hmm. I fear leaving this world with regrets even more. Leaving the world with what if? What if I had accomplished more? What if I had tried harder? What if I didn't stay more as comfortable? One of my favorite quotes by Charles Bukowski goes, You can't beat death, but you can beat death with life. It's lonely at the top, but hold on, hold on to your dreams, against everyone and everything, including yourself, telling you to let go, hold on. That's really very moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Impressive. I should also say that he is sponsored by, um, oops, he's also sponsored by North Face. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was imp incredibly impressive, just the way he was so calm to be able to do that. Um, any other thoughts on that video that you just saw? Okay, so this next one, this is a longer video. I'm going to skip forward because I'll, I'll explain a little bit what's happening. He has been going to the coral reefs. He's noticed, as we all are, um, I was just there a couple of years ago, and the coral reefs are all dying. And so what he's doing is that what they're doing in, now is creating artificial reefs, which you probably are all kind of aware of that. And he has created some artificial reefs, and he wanted to be able to paint underwater. And so he wanted to do free diving, no oxygen tanks. So the first half of this video is him training to figure out how to do that, training to figure out how to hold his breath long enough to be able to paint. Um, so what I'm going to show you is him the actual going down and working on these artworks that he's created underwater. And this video is on his website. If you want to see the full video, it's about, I think it's actually 12 minutes long. You, you're welcome to uh, do that. Is that kind of clear? What's his name again? 
Um, his name is Sean. Sean Yoro. Yeah, but he goes by Hula. Hula. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna skip forward here. I know you're gonna be able to see all of this anyway. I was actually creating this piece underwater, and I'm used to these really harsh painting conditions, especially in nature. You know, when I'm painting the side of an iceberg or scaling a 50-foot tree or balancing on the edge of a waterfall just to paint a wall. And, you know, they all had their own meaning challenges, but this one by far was the most difficult and simply because there was no oxygen. The obvious solution was to use scuba tanks, but to me it was too unnatural and constricting with all the equipment. I was drawn to this idea of free dive in the whole process. It just seemed more fitting, almost like a rite of passage, in order to create my art in this new, mysterious world. I know you may thought that I could pick up freediving really easily, uh, just because I grew up surfing and in the water, and I quickly realized that the amount of experience I had at the surface with the waves was much different than what I needed to go below. And I remember doing my first dive, and barely got to 10 feet. I would I think I held my breath for like 40 seconds and you know it was so discouraging and that's when I realized that I may have bitten up more than I could chew. I knew I needed to take the long path and learn proper training and techniques if I was going to pull this off. For the next 14 months I dedicated so this thousands is all, of hours. This is all about him training. I'm going to just skip this and you can watch this at some point. I'm going to skip to the... Say, This is more than training underwater. We're going to start doing this next week in the uh, Lake Washington. So this summer, it's our new project for you guys. So finally, all that practice. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead here to him on the boat. There he is on the boat. With a talented team beside me, including my cousin. Here we go. See, he's holding, he's holding his breath. So the, again, these are artificial reefs that he's constructed and put down into the water that he's creating these artworks on. This was such a surreal experience for me, and this is just the beginning. There is no time left, and we won't stop planting these deep seeds until the reefs are stabilized, and the ones without a voice are protected before it's too late. So this project was called Deep Seeds, S-E-A-D-S, -E just so yeah. So what did you think of that? Oh, he's so specialized and so just so he's such an expert at being able to handle the different locales and the painting and have conceived it and I'm sure he has worked it out in great detail on land before he ever goes anywhere in a studio. I'm sure he has worked it out, but 
Oh, the conception is quite, quite imp very impressive. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah, the, the process of it is yeah. just so intense. And I love that as an artist, you just push yourself to new limits. And you're going to do this at the pool downstairs, right? <laughs> I actually do have an underwater project. I'll tell you about later. <laughs> you know, Brian, for me, I'm left going back to the ones that really, for me, are uh, oh, foreboding just... of the future. Uh, uh, foreboding of the future, the breaking up of the ice. Oh, because yeah. those to me, that is already showing global warming. Right. And so his paintings to me, I, I'm that, that's what I'm caught left with really worried about, mm -hmm. is where we are with global warming. And so I thought it was very successful mm -hmm. in, in making us think deeply mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, definitely. And again, I would recommend seeing this whole video because he does talk about more of the coral reefs and he actually shows other companies and corporations that are creating artificial reefs to help, you know, build this. Because I don't know if anybody's been in the water in the past couple of years, but it's really sad. I was there and it was just all dead corals everywhere. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think it's all really um, very impressive. And these are just some images. So this is this is an artificial reef that he created underwater. And there's a close up. I would I would love to know how many times he had to go up and down. Okay. <laughs> you have to do this. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine swimming over this? That'd be a little spooky. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at night. When you're playing night scuba diving. <laughs> See that? Any thought any more thoughts on these? Okay, we're going to move on to Maxim. Anybody have any idea how to say that? Zeskov, Maxim. I'm, your guess, guess is as good as mine. So this is a short uh, digital um, art film. Now, for some reason, when I play this on PowerPoint, it doesn't work that well. So I'm going to I'm going to link. I have a link to the actual video. So we're going to watch it on there instead. Oh, maybe it'll work. Let's see, maybe it's going to behave. So you can let me know what you think of this. It certainly takes the kaleidoscope a step farther. Yes. The kaleidoscope? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. When I first saw it, I didn't realize, I thought it was real. Like, I thought it was an analog, like live sort of thing. Yeah. yeah what did you think? A beautiful. What do you mean? What do you mean you thought it was alive? Live. I thought it was you could walk into an actual sea. It was like a physical presence. Like, you could walk into a room and it would see this cube morphing and changing. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. That's what I saw. Yeah. yeah. It's different. It's abstract, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it is computer generated terminology. It is. Yeah. It's, he's a graphic artist. Yeah. Yeah, so digital artist. How do you do that? I don't know. But it, <laughs> right. it doesn't have any emotion. For me, it doesn't have any emotion in it. No emotions? Yeah. No emotions. Mm -hmm. It's wonderfully technical. Yes, I couldn't wait to see the next the next iteration of where he was going. Right. There's not much emotion going on. What is the, what is the, 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 oh, those are some different ones. Yeah. Again, I'm going to put post this on the Brian Likes Art. So please, you can check out more of his work. It's all very amorphous and abstract like that and interesting. But it, I don't know if anybody was here last week when we did the digital artworks. Did anybody see the show when we did that one, the video? So it's similar to this, where it's you know art is kind of trans transitioning or transforming and morphing into the onto the screen, yeah. and what does that mean, and how do we relate to that, and how do we contextualize something like this? You know, it's really interesting. So how does the viewer view it? How does the viewer view it? That's a great question. I think yeah. Oh, you mean like literally? Literally. Yeah, you would see it. You could. It's a film. He calls it a film, so it would be on a screen. Yeah. So you don't go to a museum? I'm sure it was probably in the museum, like on screens or projected. Okay. You know, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that's a great question. I think this whole digital world is, you know, really pushing our ideas of how we view art and what view art is and its presence, which I think is exciting. Yeah. Something for Horizon House. Yes. You know what I think Horizon House needs is a big digital frame so we can show digital works. I was actually going to put a jam grant in for that. <laughs> it keeps to get, I kept waiting for the next one. I was, I was into it, you know. And yeah. Shapes, and I love all that. Last week, with the white, with the uh, kinetic, kinetic art that you, that you showed. Oh, right. Yeah, the sculptures. Just me along. I, I was deep into it. But not emotionally, though. Yeah, yeah. But it was fascinating. I could follow it wherever it went. It nice. Crazy. That's great. Yeah. And the thing about it, too, is it kept you in the moment. You know, there's, it kept you present. And you may not have been able to attach anything to it, but it was. It was intriguing. You know, and I think there's a lot of Zen art out there. That whole movement of the Merce Cunningham, John Cage, that was their whole world. This kind of like detached emotion to it, be in the moment, be present to whatever you're seeing in front of you and enjoy it. <laughs> you know, maybe it challenges you and that's a good thing. So yeah, I think that's great. I, I liked it because it was so precise that it was far, far more detailed and precise than anything a human being could have done alone. Yeah. So that, that fascinated me. That is actually a good point. It's very precise. Um, he's embracing technology as opposed to trying to humanize it, That's right. which I think is really cool. Yeah, and it's I, it's beautiful. You can make some really beautiful things out of it. Yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Any other thoughts on that one? I'm sorry for these transitions. I forgot how to transition to the next slide after the video, so I have to do a little janky. My apologies. Okay, we're going to move on to Nils Vulka. No, that, I don't know how to say that. Is that how you say it? Vulka? Vulka? Okay, so this one I think is really cool. So what is this? Teeth. Teeth. <laughs> so this is, um, I'm going to show you. Okay, so that's, that's this is um, at the museum um, in, where is this at? I want to say it's in Italy. Anyway, it's in a museum. I can't remember. Museum Fuhr. Maybe that's in Kunst. Oh, so it's probably in Germany. Kunst. So this is, I'm gonna just show you what it is and then we can talk about it. And I hope you, I hope you can hear it on the... It's breathing, yes. It's breathing, yeah. It's 
So there are a thousand precisely installed fans and 45 circuit boards to keep the movement tra on track. It, it seems, it suggests to me that the earth is breathing. Oh. It, it, gives me a, it gives me a sense of apprehension that whether we can keep it breathing or not. You know? oh, mm -hmm. So I was kind of waiting to see if maybe parts of it would die or... Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know if anyone else was re... I was kind of repulsed by it and drawn to it. And it's because it looked like it was plastic bags. It is plastic and so And so... It, it, it repulsed me in that sense, oh. <laughs> and yet it looked alive, right. and I don't know where I was going with it, but I, I was awed by it, and I loved it, but I also was repulsed by it. That's beautiful, yeah, that's great. I love it when art does that, yeah. What, what I'd like to, oh, anything else? What I thought was interesting was that this was done in 2019, and my first response was, was this when we all are breathing through our masks that was my first thing i was like oh this must have been done last year and no it was done the year before which i thought it was kind of interesting that you know but yeah definitely i found myself wanting to breathe with it yes. <laughs> yes. yeah as it was going and the, i mean you just take something simple and functional like a garbage bag you make it that scale and you and you put some precise you know, inflation and deflation to it, and you can create something like repulsive and beautiful. <laughs> any thought? Any other thoughts on that? Do we I like? I wonder if it's really, you know, how you can think of it as art because it's technology. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it go. I mean, it's just garbage bags. Anybody has those, but it's what makes the pieces the way it was worked out to have them inflate and deflate mm -hmm. by some kind of technological program or something like right, that. Right, right. And so I guess, but my thought is, is this art? What, what is art about it? It's more some kind of IT thing. Mm hmm yeah. I guess, yeah. You know, I don't know if that makes it any sense. It takes a lot of creativity to come up with the idea. Well, creativity, but is it artistic creativity or is it technological creativity? Well, if it has a meaning that if the individual gets meaning from it, isn't that what art is? Something visual that gives meaning. Mm -hmm. And the intention, I think, as well of the artist. But yeah, that's a good question. I mean, if you look at the one we looked at before, that was all technical. You know, that was all coding and, yeah. and computer stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it it has its own presence, which I think is cool. It's its own weird thing that makes you stop and say, what is that? And the way you're feeling inside, you're like, do I like this? Do I not like it? I can't stop looking at it. You know, I think that in itself is enough to say that it's successful in my in my point of view. You know, 
I don't know if that answers your question precisely. <laughs> it's kind of vague. That's what I love about it. That kind of abstract. I got to say, I showed this upstairs to the supported living yesterday. They were not impressed. They did not. <laughs> yeah, they didn't. They didn't think it was very cool. <laughs> I think it's a nice piece of engineering, but it's yeah, not terribly it's artistic. artistic. Not terribly artistic. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's. Oh, Andy, it looks like you're about to. Well, I, I noticed that it was uh, installed in a beautiful cathedral, mm -hmm. and I wondered if maybe there was some message about related to the viability of the church, or, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you could take it out that direction, too. Right. Actually, I think it was a museum. Yeah, it was a museum. Oh, it was a museum. It's one of those old oh, European museums, yeah. yeah. But it does have that old architecture, and it's, it's very out of place looking in there, but in a really cool way, I think. Yeah. But yeah, definitely check out more of his work. It's really interesting. Um, okay, we're going to move on to... Da, 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 da. Oh, there's just going to show you a couple pictures and close-ups. So that's the bags and there's like there you get a better idea of what it's in at the surroundings yeah it's a wonderful juxtaposition yes yeah, juxtaposition that's a great yes definitely a great juxtaposition yes okay we're going to move on to your what was that you say glasher <laughs> So um, he's an artist that was um, obviously affected by the COVID and quarantine, and he couldn't find, make work. So he got very resourceful, and he went out to the forest, and he gathered twigs, and he made these sorts of shapes in the forest. That's goldworthy. Very goldworthy, right? Yes, 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 yes. He said he decided to channel his own worry into a project that felt similarly vast and domineering. He said, I was working with the idea of the pure power of nature, the all-destroying force, which brings one of the richest countries in the world to a complete, completely still stand. <laughs> a wave is periodic oscillation or unique disturbance, unique disturbance the state of the system. That's what his quote says. What do you think of that? I like it better than garbage bags. <laughs> <laughs> you like it better than garbage bags? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice natural material. It is, yeah. And it doesn't have anything techy about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So to me, I find it much more comforting. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. It's like to crawl right inside there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, just crawl right inside of it, yeah. It, to me, it's a little. These there's some other ones, yeah. Yeah, I love I love the way that looks. Just like a, and he repurposed the twigs, so he would use them and he would take them down and turn them into something else. Yeah. It looks like you could just ride it, <laughs> just go light along on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's gotta take some technical proficiency. I don't know how that would, how he would do that, but um, yeah. Can you imagine seeing that at night? That'd be a little ominous. Yeah. yeah. Any responses or thoughts or feelings about these? I think they're very ominous. Yeah. I think he's showing how we could all be torn asunder and pulled down into a black hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I think he is, like he said, he's channeling his worry and what was going on that year. Yeah, and I think that's very poignant. Yeah, it's a good point. I wonder how long it took him to make something like that. I know. I do, too. He said he did between November 2020 and March 2021. Mm, so six months. Yeah, spent his days in secluded location near Hamburg where he gathered dead wood and constructed nine massive crests, the largest of which spans four meters high and nine meters wide. But, yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, so it's like two, two waves crashing. He's also a photographer, so. 
There's another one. When I showed somebody, they're like, oh, look at all those roots. I thought it looked like roots as well. Getting back to our roots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, any other questions on those? All right, my friends, we're going to move on to Steve Parker. I thought this one was fun. Okay, so art, he's an artist and musician, and this is an interactive project. So he invites viewers and viewers to feel the music, literally, activated by touch. This is called Ghost Box, and it plays randomized audio segments on a loop, including the ticks of Morse code, the chorus of spirituals, and the blows of the shofar. I'm not sure, S-H-O-F-A-R? Yeah. And Iron Age Celtic Carnix. Each time someone did I say that right? Each time someone makes contact with a part of the wall sculpture, a new noise emits. Inspired by World War II era shortwave radio, the mounted piece is constructed from a mix of salvaged brass, tactical maps, paper, music scores, wires, maps, pins, and electronics. So that is actually the sculpture there. And there's some people testing it out. I'm going to show you a little short video. The only thing about this video that's a little annoying is that I think he included both headphone sets. <laughs> so, but it's it's only about two minutes long, so you'll be getting an idea. And I think this would be something cool to bring to supported living, actually. So what do you think of that? It's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a huge toy. <laughs> it is a toy. It makes you just want to keep exploring. Yeah, a bunch of series of non sequiturs. <laughs> Would you consider this art? <laughs> Well, it's more fun if more than one person plays at it, I would think. You know, because you get much more cluster sounds and everything. Mm -hmm. Just two hands. Right, yeah, but you do have headphones on, so I think it's kind of interesting that it takes you on, you're kind of on this audio journey. Yeah, yeah you're on this kind of an abstract, takes you different yeah. places, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just thought that was a fun piece, and I think that would be cool to bring something here like that sensory touch and sound mm -hmm. for upstairs. I think that would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Get in contact with this artist. Okay, I'm going to show one. Any other questions on that or responses? No. Okay. Oh. No. Okay. The question is: It installed permanently someplace, or was it just? Uh, I think it was not. It was just a, uh, for a show. And then yeah. it's taken apart. Yeah, I think it was just for a show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was called Sirens. 
So the piece was called Sirens, and it was done in 2018. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more. These are kind of some of my personal favorites. I really love street art, so this is more street art. Um, his name is Pita. Pita. I think he's Italian. So uh, this is the first one. Yeah, so these are um, spray paint. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So he says, in my pictorial, sculptural, and mural compositions, the geometrical shapes I design behave as they interact with the surrounding environment. In particular, when painting on walls, my aim is to create a dialogue with the structural and cultural parameters of the surrounding context, either architectural or not. So that's just a flat wall? Yeah. That's just a flat wall, that's yeah. Easy. Didn't you show us? Something like this. Did, yes. Yeah. And that was that artist's name was Ten Ten. So that was similar. You're right. Yeah. So this is a new a different artist. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. And that's the artist there. Doing his thing. Yeah, I love the colors on that. Yeah, what do you think of these? Yeah, I think we should get one here on the side of our building. Yes, and they should fix the one on the side of the Jimmy Mason. You know, oh, yes. Fading away. That would be cool to get this artist in here. So there's kind of a, I like, the, I like this one because it gives you a, more of a close-up. And that's all flat. That's one that's just right on the wall. Wow. Yeah. I love this choice of colors, too. I think it's really well done. And he must use a ton of paint. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. All that action on that wall. I know. And this projection doesn't actually do its service. I would recommend checking his website out. You get a better idea of the, the, the textures and the depth that he created. But yeah, I mean, it's so cool. Look at, look at how this... He's created this big structure. Looks like it's being propped up by these braces. That's pretty amazing. Isn't that cool? Yes. Yeah. They're so strong and powerful, but they're also just sort of benign. You know, you can just they're just on the wall, yeah. which is really nice. It's almost impossible to believe. <laughs> I know. Takes you in and turns you around. <laughs> I know. For that building and those apartments. Right. Like. Exactly. Yeah, exactly that. It turns that whole structure into a piece of art, whereas you wouldn't have even ever looked at it or noticed it. You would think probably it was kind of not very attractive. Yeah. Do you think they're computer uh, originated? Oh, that's a good question. Like his process, does he like make them on the computer and then just replicate it? That's a good question. Um, he doesn't talk about his actual when he gets out there and does it. Um, so I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if he looks at it. And I'm sure he practices a lot, yeah. you know, on walls to figure out how to do it. It looks yeah. kind of stream of consciousness to me. But I don't know. Yeah. He says, um, oh, sorry. Are you sure that's not three-dimensional? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, it's flat. Yeah. I mean, you can see, like, there's a line right here against the wall. Um, and then I, I'm sure this is just white here, but it, the way he created that. And again, you know, I bet if you stood in front of it, it would you would see that it was flat. Yeah, but maybe yeah. from this perspective, that sort of, like, side mm -hmm. angle, they were like, let's really... Monopoly, capitalize on the perspective of it. Trump Lloyd. Yeah. Did I say that right? Trump Lloyd? Uh -huh. right. Mm -hmm. It makes it so much going on. <laughs> he sure found the most bland structures, didn't he, to do it on? I mean, these apartments, they're just like, wow. Yeah, I think that's kind of the point, though. Yeah, because you don't want it to compete with anything, and you yeah. you want it to pop. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that was a uh, interesting. 
what fun to come home to that at night. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or if you're looking for an apartment and you see that, you're like, wow, I want to live there. <laughs> Where does he make things? Um, he's based out of Italy. Um, so I think he doesn't say exactly where he goes, but um, I, he's in demand. He travels around a lot of, around Europe and does these buildings. Yeah. These are obviously not guerrilla art. You know, he's commissions for these. Yeah. <laughs> he's not doing this at night. In fact, <laughs> there was a picture and I forgot to put it on here. He actually has a crane that he uses. It's not just, you know, like janky ropes and stuff. He's got like, you know, construction, you know, one of those things that you stand on. Yeah. And then, yeah. So, oops. Yep. So that is actually the last slide I have. So, um, yeah. Any responses on these, on this artist? Well, we come to downtown Seattle. Yeah, I think we really need it. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes. You should all reach out to him and tell him. Yeah. Bring our city back to life. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you coming out and your responses and and all that. And um, I'm going to do another one in July. Um, I'll probably take a break in August and come back in September.